In 1977, a group of us just set up as a campaign group to try and persuade the council to start putting facilities in for cyclists. And you must remember in the late 70s, there was just nothing in Britain at all for cycling. Cycle Bag stands for Channel Your Calf and Leg Energy Bristol Action Group, from what I recall. I think we never realised at that time quite what we were sparking off. We were just wanting to make Bristol a better place to cycle in and a safer place. Well, we had the usual sort of campaigns, a thousand cyclists would get out on the streets and present petitions, but it didn't really get anywhere. So really the practical side of building appealed to me and a few of us much more. And the railway from Bristol to Bath, the old Midland Railway, was available. It had recently become disused, so it just seemed an obvious thing to go for. joined the centre of the two cities, it avoided terrible roads, it avoided big hills, it took you through beautiful countryside in between. It had all the ingredients, we now realise, for what is now the most popular route in Britain. We didn't realise at the time that us, with a few shovels and barrows and kids, building this cycle path, were trailblazing for countrywide network. Yes, it carries more people on bicycles than the trains used to that ran on the train line that it, that it replaces, which is a really interesting statistic. When we started, we had no concept of a national route. We had no concept of anything other than the one route we were building between Bristol and Bath. The moment it became hugely popular, we realised that every town in the country needed a route like that. I think when Bristol Cycle Bag morphed into Sustrans, it suddenly became a very serious operation. Originally we asked for 42 million because that was the answer in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So I thought that's a good thing. The answer is well, 42 million must be a good sum. It certainly made cyclists more, more visible and definitely got it onto the agenda as a sort of viable means of getting around urban areas and beyond. So I think it's had a, a tremendous impact over the years. We always saw it as a catalyst for change, something which, if you like, would raise the game, would demonstrate to the public that cyclists were, you know, desirable forms of travel because you were building them this fantastic network. What the National Cycle Network has been to cities all over the UK and to, to local authorities all over the UK is a demonstration of the fact that if you build great space, people will get out of their cars, they'll get out on their foot and bike. Um, and when you think that over half of all car journeys are less than five miles long, the bike offers a huge potential. But it does take investment. You can't just do it on a wing and a prayer. It's got to be about creating the safe environment that's going to enable all those want-to-be cyclists, all those want-to-be walkers. And our aspiration in the short term is to get to eight out of ten journeys under five miles being made by foot, bike and public transport. I think it just helps to begin that cultural shift uh, around getting the whole of the UK more focused on the benefits of the bike.